Hello, welcome to the audio workshop. The audio workshop is a series of videos in which we will demonstrate how to program the audio object and the web audio API using JavaScript. There's a lot to know about programming custom web audio software, so I'm going to leave this series open-ended just like we did for the Canvas Bootcamp series. I'll be reading viewer comments as we release each video for the series, which will make the series interactive from start to finish. If you stick with the series, you'll gain the insight required to create virtually any type of audio software and audio interfaces for the web, not just custom audio players. You'll be equipped to go way beyond that simple task if you watch all of the videos added to this series. Let's get started right away. Let's go to our computer desktop and create a new folder and name it Audio Project. Now go inside of that folder and create a new folder inside of it called Images. And that's that. Now you can fire up your favorite code editor. I happen to use Dreamweaver CS5, but we're going to be in code view the whole time. We're not going to be using any of Dreamweaver's instant clicky features. We're going to be in code view the whole time, hard coding everything. So you can use Notepad++, Notepad, or if you're on a Mac, you can use whatever uh, code editor that Mac offers. The code editor that you're in is no big deal because we're going to be hard coding everything from start to finish. So I'm going to create a new HTML file. And I'm just going to remove all of the default crap that uh, Dreamweaver throws in. I'm going to press Control S or I can go to File, Save As, and I'm going to put it into my Audio Projects folder. I'm going to save it as example.html. Save. So now if we go into our Audio Project on our desktop, we have our Images folder and now a new HTML file called Example. Now we're going to begin example.html with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document because we're going to be using all modern code approaches. Now inside of audio project, let's go ahead and create a new folder for any audio files that we're going to play with because we might wind up with many different audio files, especially if we show how to create playlists and dynamic playlists for a single audio player. So with the audio folder created, Go ahead into your music folder and grab out any MP3. Or if you don't have any MP3s in your computer, you need to download one now. And I'm going to paste in the MP3 that I want. You can see its name is stoker.mp3. Now inside of our document, we're going to put a style element. Make sure we go down a couple of lines and close it. And we're also going to add a script element. And make sure we close that one as well. The style element is where we'll place all of our CSS to style any audio components and interfaces. And the script element is where we're going to add all of the dynamics for the programming of the audio interfaces and software that you can then externalize into a .js file and call in. So I'm going to go into the script element and type in var audio because that's the first variable that I'm going to set. If I wanted to define or initialize more variables, like for instance, if we put a play button in a moment, I'll just leave that there because we are going to create a play button in a moment. And you can just comma separate any amount of variable names that you want to initialize for your program. Now what we want to do in web documents, it's a good idea to make little applications and software like this run only when the window has finished loaded. That way all assets are loaded into the document. So in that case, you can put a window dot add event listener and the type is load and the listener is the code that we want to run and that's going to be init audio player and then you can just close parentheses semicolon so this means when the window has loaded all the assets and everything's loaded into the document that's when the load event for the window fires off and it's going to make init audio player function execute so all we need is that function so we type in function init audio player open close parentheses opening curly brace, go down a couple of lines, and closing curly brace. So most of the programming for my little audio player is going to be in this function. So I'll type in audio is equal to new audio object. And in JavaScript, this is how you can create a new audio object. You can even create a new object through code and then add it to the page. And it will be like you having an audio tag down on the page. So you don't ever have to really put an audio tag on your page. The HTML audio element does not need to go anywhere in your document for you to have audio playing in the document. And you can give it all kind of controls in a custom way that you want. So now let's give that audio a stream source. So we type in audio.source is equal to 
whatever the file name is that we want to play. So we have to go into our audio folder that we created and make sure we put the proper file name. Then just for starting off we're going to put audio.loop which is another property of the audio object. So if you want the song to loop over and over you just put audio.loop equals true. Alright, just to make sure that we're connected to our stream correctly, let's go ahead and type in audio.play. This is the play method for the audio object. Now I'm going to be discussing all of the different various attributes, properties, and methods that you can apply to your audio object. That way we don't leave anything out. So they'll be discussed all through the series. Okay, now run this in your favorite browser. Okay, so at this point, you've created a new audio object through code, you assigned a source for it, you specified it to loop, and then you made it play at this line right here. Now we're sure we're connected to our audio stream. Now if you just wanted to load some background music into an application or document, this is the simplest way to go about it. But you don't have any controls for the user. There's no way the user can change the volume, stop the file, or anything like that. And that's really not cool. You don't want naked audio just playing in the background. You want to allow the user to at least stop it or turn it down or something. Okay, now I've created four little tiny icons. And let me go ahead and put them in my images folder. I'm going to paste them right into the images folder. And let me highlight those so you can see what they look like. This is a little pause icon, a little pause symbol. This is a play symbol, speaker symbol, and then speaker muted. So basically, the speaker and speaker muted is going to be the two states that our mute button switches in between. Now the play and pause are going to be the two states that our play pause button switches in between. So you can create these very easily in any kind of graphics editor that you like. They can look anything you want them to look like and be any size you want them to be. Now it's also good to note that you can create symbols and shapes, whatever you want, through pure CSS. And sometimes you can find Unicode or hex value characters that will allow you to bypass creating any graphics altogether. But I'm going to be using graphics that I created in Fireworks. So remember, in your audio project folder, in the images folder, you want to have these four files. And mine happen to be .png type files with transparent backgrounds. Now let's go down into the body element. We're going to place some HTML. We're going to start putting in some controls. And since my background is currently white and my little symbols are all white, I'm going to change the page background by targeting the body element and giving it a background color of devil code. The devil color. Okay, now I'll proceed to go into the body element and put in two little controls. One is called the play pause button and the next is called the mute button. So we can just copy that one and name it mute. So we have mute BTN and play pause BTN. And those are both regular button elements. But we're going to style them to act and look the way we want. So I'll go back up into the style element and let's add the rule for the play pause button button element. It has a button with an ID of play pause button gets all of these properties. We're giving it a background URL image set to no repeat. And you can see the image path is in our images folder, the pause.png. Now since my little application is set to play by default I want the pause symbol to be showing in that button and not the play symbol because the audio file is already going to be playing so by default it has to be the pause symbol we give it border none the size that we want it to be with the width and the height and then we set the cursor to pointer just to make sure that little hand symbol appears for people with a mouse that way they know it's clickable now I'm gonna put in another rule for the mute button and it's very similar and actually, if there's a lot of code, like see how I'm specifying border none here and border none here and cursor pointer here, cursor pointer here. I can avoid duplicating those like that if I just target all button elements. So you can, in your CSS, you can just type in button and that will target all button elements. Let's take border out of here, X, and put it here. And let's also take our cursor pointer, X, and put it up here. So now you can slim down your CSS a bit because you don't have to specify that in every button. So basically any button on the page is going to have these properties added to it along with any ones that you target it directly and give properties to. Alright, let's go ahead and render this in our favorite browser. You can see that you have pause and mute buttons ready to go. But they're not doing anything yet. And actually, you see that 
ugly blue outline that will show in some browsers, you can remove that by putting outline none here. So outline none. And then when you render, as you click those, there won't be any silly outline. Now all we have to do is put a little JavaScript in to make those actually control the audio track. So in our JavaScript, we can type a little note that says set object references. And this will set all the object references needed for all of the little controls or whatever we want. So the first one is we target the play button. Remember we created this play button variable? All we're going to do is make that variable equal to the object reference for the play pause button on the page. Now let's do the similar thing for the mute button. And you can see that we haven't specified a variable for the mute button. So let's go ahead and put that right next to the play button where we're initializing all the variables for our program. Now directly under that we can put another little note that says add event handling. The first thing we'll do is handle the click event for the play button, the play pause button. So we say play button dot add event listener. The type of event is click and the code that we want to execute when that button is clicked is a function called play pause. And then the same for the mute button. We'll add an event listener for the click event and we'll execute code that is a function called mute. Now all we need are those two functions. So create yourself another note and type in functions. Now we know we need a function called play pause, so let's just copy that right there. And let's type in function, paste in play pause, open close parentheses, opening curly brace, and closing curly brace. And you can use the same structure for your next function, which is going to be called mute. So copy that, paste it here. So you have function nests all set up now for play pause and mute. Okay, inside of the play pause button, the code is very simple. All we need is an if else condition statement to toggle between play and pause. So let's put that into place. Make sure we indent correctly. So the condition reads, if audio.paused property, the paused attribute, if that is equal to true, then we're going to set the audio to play because it would be paused at that point. So we set it to play and then we change the play button style.background to the URL image for the pause button. Else, if the audio.paused is equal to false, that means it's playing, then we're going to set the audio to pause using the pause method. That pauses your audio. And we make the play button's background equal to the little arrow play symbol. Because at that point the audio would be paused. So you want to show the play symbol to the user. That way they understand that they can click play again to resume. Now the mute function, if else condition statement, also needs to toggle between muted and not muted. And that code looks something like this. We say if audio.muted property is equal to true, then the audio muted is false. That means it's playing at its normal volume. And you make sure you give the mute button's background the speaker image. Else, if audio muted is equal to false, then we change audio muted to true and mute the audio and make sure we provide the speaker muted state of that image because at that point the audio would be muted in this part of the toggle mechanism. In this part of the toggle mechanism the audio is set to play at its normal volume by changing the muted property back to false. So that's how the two toggle mechanisms work for those buttons. Now let's test this in our favorite browser to see if we have a working application. So you can see I can toggle between playing and pausing. By default it's the pause symbol. And when you hit pause, it pauses the audio and the play symbol appears. So let's hit play again. Now let's mute the audio. That just silences the audio stream, but it's still playing. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll end this first video of the series right here, and we'll continue on to add things like cool custom seek sliders, volume sliders, that way the user can slide between different volumes. We'll make sure they have a seek bar, that way they can seek through the track, or just click the bar and it'll go to that point in the track, and other cool things like that. And we'll take you real deep down the rabbit hole within this series, to where you can create custom players, and way beyond that, applications and software, way beyond just custom players. So don't miss video number two of the audio workshop.